Hello everyone, and let's check out another exciting chess game by Mikhail Tal. And in this chess game, Mikhail Tal has the black pieces, and his opponent is a player named Ovsky. And this game was played in 1952. Let's check out how this game went on. Ovsky starts the game with playing e4. The Sicilian defense by Tal, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4. Exchanging the pawns, the open Sicilian, knight to f6, knight to c3, d6, f3, e5. Attacking the knight, knight to b3, bishop to e6 by Mikhail Tal, bishop to e3, bishop to e7, queen to d2, a5. Attacking from the queen side, stopping the pawn, a4, and Mikhail Tal. Castled, but on the other hand, Avski castled from the queen side. An aggressive approach by Avski. His plan is simple: pushing the pawns from the king side, opening the files like the f, the g, and the h file, and hoping to attack the king after creating open files in the king side. That's the plan. But Mikhail Tal played rook to c8, lining the rook with the king, placing the rook in the semi-open file, and we have g4 by Avski as planned, pushing the pawns, marching the pawns, knight to b4. The knight is too close to the king, push the other pawn, but Avski pushed the pawn once again, g5, knight to d7, and then h4 by Avski. Knight to b6 by Mikhail Tal. Maybe white should kill the knight. Capturing the knight with the cardinal would be a good move for white. But impatiently, Avski pushed the pawn once again. And it is black to move. What would you do in this position? Mikhail Tal sacrificed the knight. Knight takes on a4 by Tal. The first sacrifice at move 16. But Avski didn't capture the knight, and he pushed the pawn. But let's take it back. Why not capturing the knight? If knight takes on a4, well, this is no rocket science. Because the bishop takes on b3, and the pawn is pinned. Getting back the material. And black is much better in this position. Let's get back to the real game. After knight takes on a4 by Tal, we have g6. Keep going in the king side. What would you do? Well, Mikhail Tal captured the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes on b3. And what else? White captured back. C takes on b3. And then knight takes on c3. And in this position, white has to capture back with the pawn. B takes on c3. And then again. This is one of the key moments in this chess game. What would you do once again? What would you do in this position if you were in Mikhail Tal's shoes? Try to guess like Tal. Try to think like Tal. What would you do? Did you see Rook takes on C3? Mikhail Tal played. Rook takes on C3. This is check. Sacrificing the Rook. But Avski played king to b1, not capturing the rook. If capturing the rook, if queen takes on c3, then knight to a2, forking the king and the queen. King to d2, and capturing the queen. Knight takes on c3, and as you can see, this is all over for white. So in the real game, after rook takes on c3, we have running away, king to b1. And Tal captured the pawn. Rook takes on b3. This is check. King to a1. And then queen to d7. Threatening to play queen to a4. Check. Mate. After blocking with the queen. How to defend? There is no reasonable defense in this position. This is why Avski resigned. Another smashing, lightning attacking chess game by Mikhail Tal. Beautiful chess game.
A beautiful attacking game. And let me show you the possible continuation. There is no reasonable defense. So let's make a random move. And then queen to a4. This is check. Only defense. And queen takes on a2. Check. Mate. White could prolong the game with moves like g takes on f7, rook takes on f7, and queen to a2. And knight takes queen. Bishop to c4. Queen to a4. And queen takes on b3. And once again, white is losing in this chess game. So this is why, after queen to d7, Ofsky resigned. Ofsky was hoping to catch Tal in the king side. But Mikhail Tal catch his opponent off guard much, much quicker than Ofsky did to him. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.